Now that we understand some of the basic instructions in ARM, we can start to take a look at some of the typical high-level constructs that we would see and find out how they map generally into the assembly language. And the way that we're going to start with this is by taking a look at statements related to conditionals. These would be statements sort of like if statements in higher level languages. We want to take instructions based on the result of something else that has happened in the program already, perhaps something related to a user input or something of the sort. And we want to be able to take different paths based on the values that are provided. So in this video, I'm going to give you some really basic examples of how this can be done. So. The main way that we do these branching instructions is using comparators and branches. So a comparator is something that allows us to compare two values to determine whether or not they are greater than, less than, or equal to each other. Branches, on the other hand, allow us to move around our program to different locations based on the result of comparisons. So for example, we might want to move to a different part of the program if a result is greater than another, or maybe if two results are equal, we move to a different location in the program. This is very similar to the way that if statements and else statements work in your typical programming languages. So let's take a look at a really simple example. I'm going to go ahead and move some values into some registers. We'll do some comparisons and see generally how these branches actually work. So let's move it to R0, the value 1. I'm going to move 2 into R1. And now I'm going to do a comparison between these two values. And the way that we do this is we use CMP. That's our comparison instruction. And then we give it two arguments. And I'll discuss how this generally works once we've got it written out here. So what a comparison is really doing is it's going to take a look at R0 and R1, and it's going to do the following computation. It's going to do R0 minus R1. So it's going to subtract the two from each other. Why does it do this? Because this is a way of comparing two values. We know that if R0 is bigger than R1, then the result of this will be some positive number. If R0 is smaller than R1, the result will be some negative number. And if they're the same as each other, of course, the result is going to end up being zero. So we can know those three results based on the subtraction of the numbers. So what will happen is the computation for the compare will do this subtraction. And what will happen is the CPSR register, this one right here, is going to get set based on the results of the subtraction. Now, as we've briefly discussed in the CPSR register, we can set different things like negative, zero, carry, overflow, and these sorts of flags. Well, it turns out that that's very useful for this situation because suppose if we subtract these two numbers and I want to see if R0 is smaller than R1. If R0 is smaller than R1, I expect to get some negative number. And that would mean that the negative flag should get set in the CPSR register. So you see how all of this sort of fits together. We've sort of put the puzzle together and we can see how we can use all of these different pieces to get our conditional statements. So this is a very high level construct that we're able to replicate in assembly. For that matter, when you compile your high level languages, it's using this sort of idea in the background. Maybe not exactly like this, but similar sorts of ideas to this. So understanding that, what happens after we do this comparison? Well. In this case, maybe we want to check to see if, um, so let's say we want to check to see if R0 is bigger than R1. So we want to see if it's greater than R1. What we can do is we can use a branch greater than, which is written as BGT. So it's B is a branch and then GT is greater than. And what we do is we give this a location and the location is going to be some label. Now we did also discuss briefly the idea of labels. So start is an example of a label. And we can actually add more labels if we would like. So I can add in a label like greater, for instance. This would be the label that will run when the branch greater than occurs. So what I can say, I could say, I could say BGT, then I can see greater. What will happen is when it does this comparison, if it finds that R0 is bigger than R1, it will move to this greater label and it will start to execute whatever is provided here. So in this case, we'll just do something to see that this is working. Um, we'll move a value into R2. 
So that would be an example of this. Now, let's go ahead and run this and just see what ends up happening. So you can see generally that these values actually aren't greater, right? R0 is not greater than R1, which means that we shouldn't actually take this branch here. Now, the question is what happens after if we don't take this branch? And the answer is we just continue on as if we never actually executed this instruction. So maybe to make this a little bit more clear, let me add in a move instruction inside of here, right? So we can add in this move instruction and we can see that when we do this, the comparison ends up not being a value that's greater. You can see the negative flag is set indicating that the subtraction was a negative number. When we do this, you see that it skips over this branch and it just moves into the next instruction. So you can see how that generally works. Now, if it were greater, right, if I said three, for instance, here, and we ran this, what would end up happening is we do our comparison. You see that we don't get a negative number. Instead, we actually get a carry. And this indicates the value was bigger rather than being smaller you'll see that we can move into this branch for greater than. You can see that rather than moving into this instruction, it skips it and goes to this greater label. So this gives you an idea of what's actually happening with these branches. Now, generally, when we're doing these sorts of instructions, it's important to note the flow of assembly languages. If the value isn't greater than, when we had this instruction here, we saw that it moved to this instruction. However, once this instruction finishes, assembly will continue moving through until it reaches the next instruction. And you can see what ends up happening is we end up in this greater branch anyways. And that is, of course, a problem. We don't like that. What we want to do is we want to skip the greater branch. We want to make sure that we don't actually reach it if we're not greater than that value. To do this, we can use branches as well. So there's a special type of branch called a branch always, B-A-L, so branch and then always. And this will always execute. So we'll always branch this location regardless of what happens. So for B-A-L, what I could do is I could say rather than going to greater, I can go to a different one. You know, maybe I'll call this one default. So in this case, we can create a default label and then we could do something here. So I could do the same thing as before. Right, so we move two into R2. And we can see that in this case, if we don't reach this greater branch, we move here and we always branch to default, which skips over greater and ends up here instead. This allows us to effectively bypass this greater instruction. Now, another thing that we need to keep in mind here is once we finish the greater portion, right, we would also fall into the default case. So it's just very important to note that the instructions are always going to run sequentially. I want you to understand that very clearly that everything is going to run sequentially here, right? And I can show you this, right? So if I compile and load this, we have three, we have two, we subtract them, we do the branch for greater than, we end up in this move instruction, right? So we do this move instruction and you can see that we end up in default next, right? And then it runs that instruction. So it's very important to note that it's always going to move sequentially, right? So if we don't want to go into default after greater, I should add in another branch to move somewhere else. So this is just something to keep in mind when you're writing these branches, everything runs sequentially. That could be a little bit tricky. So just be very careful of that. Stepping through the programs is going to make it very clear what is going on. You'll understand it completely once you step through a few programs, but just keep that in mind and keep thinking about that as you're writing your code and running it and practicing with it. So this gives you a general idea of the different branches and how they generally work in our program. Now, there's, of course, a lot of different branches, and I'm not going to like show off every single one of them or go into a hefty amount of detail for them. I'll just sort of like lay out a few of them here that are common. So we have greater than and greater than or equal to. We have less than and less than or equal to. And then we have equals or does not equals. Those are the different branches that we have available to us. And they're fairly intuitive in naming, right? EQ equals NE, not equals, LT is less than, LE is less than or equal to, and so on like this. You can get a whole table of these through the ARM documentation. There's actually a lot more than the ones that I'm showing here. I'm just showing you the most basic ones that will come up most frequently. If you ever find yourself needing a very special branch, it likely exists and you can 
find that branch in the actual documentation. But this gives you the main overall picture of what branches are commonly used, how do we use branches, and what is the effect of using the branches. So that's everything for this video. In the next video, we're going to see some applications of branching in the form of looping. So branches allow us to implement looping and repetition as well. So we're going to take a look at this sort of concept and be able to build some interesting applications and hopefully help you understand this idea of conditionals and branching a little bit more.